main objective of this presentation is to give you the understanding of the business analyst's role, uh, how a business analyst can help you, and what are the main challenges for a business analyst in the projects, and also how you can help a business analyst to solve all of those challenges. So this is a brief agenda that we'll go through. So why analysis matter? Who is a business analyst? What is the current career path in SoftServe? What are different results of work of a business analyst in different stages of a project? And how we can help and what are the challenges for us as a BAs? So why analysis matters? Uh, well, from the researches, different, different types of researches, most of the uh, origins of failed projects were uh, could be resolved by uh, analysis, so a good analysis. And as you can see, poorly defined applications uh, contribute to a lot of different project failures, costing a lot of money for in the US. And also, almost 80% of project failures can be attributed directly to poor requirements gathering. So we will get back to these statistics as uh, by the end of the presentation, I'll show you the uh, six most common reason for project failures. But as you can see, the analysis is a really important part of the whole project development cycle. And what is exactly a business analyst? So business analysis is just trying to understand uh, what the business needs, what the enterprise needs, and try to translate it into the language understandable by uh, technical people. So as a business analyst, as a person performing business analysis, I'm somewhat defined as a bridge between the business and the IT. And also what we can do is that throughout the business analysis, we can actually uh, prepare an enterprise for all of the changes uh, during the time. So for example, when the company decides to take a turn and try to develop their solution in a different direction, that's where business analysis helps, because then we can try to understand what is the impact of the changes, uh, how we can adapt uh, with different things that have been developed in the company, and so on. And as you can see, business analysis can be uh, actually performed on, on many different levels. So it can be strategical, it can be tactical or operational. So on each and every level, business analysis is present in different forms, but still, that is something that helps the whole company in, in uh, changing and in growth in the future. So who is actually a business analyst? Uh, it's really hard sometimes to define only one person responsible for business analysis in, in, in the company. So as you can see on this image, a business analyst can wear many hats because we can be product owners, we can be a system analyst, we can be process analyst, data analyst, and so on and so on and so on. Actually, a business analyst, as per definition of uh, BA book that we use, is just a person who performs any business analysis task. So discovering, synthesizing, analyzing information, trying to optimize processes, trying to elicit the requirements, manage the requirements over time, uh, manage the change, and to determine underlying issues and causes of all of the changes and problems that the business is uh, solving, trying to solve. So there is no strict position for a business analyst, because business analysis can be performed by anyone, and in different companies, it can be named in many different ways. But in SoftServe, we are using a business analysis in our competence model. So right now, it looks like this. The lowest level is associate BA. That's just a person that uh, can uh, elicit the requirements, can uh, analyze the documents, can specify, specify the requirements on the lower level, but still requires supervision. Then we have junior BAs. So junior BAs are the first level of the independent uh, BAs that uh, can be found in our company. Those are the people that can work by themselves, by themselves with the customer. They can uh, establish the requirement management process and try to translate all the functional requirements to the project team. So that's the actual bridge that I've been telling you about. So the bridge between the functional requirements that the customer is reporting 
and these technical requirements that then need to be uh, gathered by the development team and to be addressed. Then we have the intermediate BA, which is which requires lots of involvement with the customer and trying to provide the whole business context to the solution. Because when you work as a business analyst, it's not only about gathering the requirements, it's just about trying to solve the problem that the customer has. There may be situations where software is not the only solution. Perhaps there is a, reason, there is a, a solution hidden in the process management or trying to optimize some of the processes that are within the company or trying to use a different solution. So that's, that's where the intermediate BA and all of the higher position comes uh, because we can analyze a bigger context of the, of the problem and try to provide a proper solution for, for the customer. Then we have the senior BAs. So in the senior BAs, that's the uh, step where you can uh, specialize. So you can be a, a process analyst, or you can or you can be an enterprise analyst. So the enterprise analyst is a person that is responsible for a enterprise approach. So we are trying to solve problems of a huge corporations, trying to use enterprise systems, trying to address all the issues that they have with platforms and so on. And the uh, process analyst, it's more about keeping the higher picture, but then uh, keeping the bigger picture, but then trying to understand how the company works. So, so then we can address all of the business needs. And then at the very top, we have a lead BA. So lead BAs are somewhat of leaders in our BA world, so they can co coordinate different analysis teams, they can, uh, in some cases, they can act on client premises and then uh, try to be more involved in the company growth as a, as a whole. So what is the actual involvement that we have during all of the stages of the project? As a business analyst, we are involved since the very beginning. So as you can see, we have the pre-sales phase, we have the discovery, the implementation, and the maintenance. Uh, and why those activities and those stages are really important? Because during the pre-sales, we actually are presenting what we can offer to the customer. We can define the high scope of the whole project. We can analyze different approaches. And also, we can work with salespeople to form a proposal. So that's the first step that we are getting contact with the customer because then we can understand the underlying problem that the customer have and try to convince them that going with us is the right decision. And from this stage, we have uh, several deliver deliverables that we can then uh, give to the customer. So we have the uh, presentation of expertise. So we here we just flex our muscles and show that we are the best choice for them and we can solve all of the problems. Then we have a case study, so we're trying to find the similar, similar cases that we've had with different customers and try to present the approach that we took. And then we have the uh, raw BA input to proposals. So after the conversation with the customer during the pre sale phase, we can actually define a high level scope, somewhat of a backlog and different diagrams, models whatever the customer needs. Then we can go to the discovery phase. So why do we need discovery phase, guys? Any ideas? Because we need to understand uh, some uh, of internal work of company which we want to sell our product. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're trying to achieve. So during the discovery phase, we are actually trying to describe the uh, solution of, for the implementation to obtain the contract. So we are trying to define what we can put into the contract with the customer. So some kind of our commitment to the customer of what we will deliver. So that's, that's actually close what, of what, you, what you've said. And the whole discovery phase can be divided into three different phases, which can take from one day to a couple of weeks. So the first one is the pre-discovery activities. So during the pre-discovery activities, that's just of 
getting the grasp of a company. So we're trying to uh, analyze the stakeholders that are in the company. We are trying to define the goals, the whole scope, and trying to uh, define the whole agenda because we try to be with customer as transparent as possible. So uh, we want them to understand what is the whole reason of the discovery as well. Because sometimes the customer does not understand. Well, we have a problem. We need to, we need to get this problem solved. Why do you need additional discovery for, uh, to do it? So we're trying also to explain to them why the discovery is really important phase of a product because the whole deliverables that we get from the discovery uh, actually defines how the whole project will go. So during the uh, then we have the on-site discovery activities. So uh, during this time we actually usually we go to the client premises. We try to analyze the processes. We try to. Uh, analyze the whole, whole environment, define the exact stakeholders. So during the uh, pre-discovery, we've done the uh, stakeholder analysis. So we've drawn, for example, a stakeholder maps, uh, try to define the impact of all the stakeholders. But during the discovery phase, so the on-site discovery activities, we try to uh, contact the exact stakeholders that will uh, solve our issues with a problem and the exact stakeholders that, that needs we will address with the project. And then we try to define the roles and responsibilities as well. Because if we, the, if we identify stakeholders that have uh, uh, roles that are high in the hierarchy and have a huge power attached to them, then uh, it will be easier to uh, go with the whole project. So during the on-site discovery activities, we also try to find solutions, create the whole vision and, and scope, and also get, get the sign-off for, for the scope, so what we actually will put in the project. The needed thing is also to define some kind of a roadmap that we will use during the project, so to define how we will move releases, what, kind, what set of functionalities will be released when, and so on and so on. The last phase is the post-discovery analysis. So during the post-discovery analysis, we just take all of this knowledge that we've gathered during uh, those two first phases of discovery and try to put them into manageable backlog, try to create mockups if needed, try to create such some models and diagrams, or to create a software requirement specification. It's all dependent on the approach that we'll take. Because as a business analyst, I can work with Agile, I can work with, with Waterfall. So depending on what kind of approach I'll take, I'll create different types of documents. And also, uh, it's really deser desirable to transfer all of the knowledge they've gathered to different members in the team. So then they can try to grasp the whole context of the project. <clears throat> so. As a deliverable, during the first phase, we'll present the visit plan, so the agenda. Then we'll create some additional documents that will define some high business goals. We will try to define the stakeholder maps. And then different documents, so the SRS document, or backlog, or mockups, or models and diagrams, or all of them at once. And that's the discovery phase. So after the discovery phase, it comes to the implementation of a project. And here, it's quite easy to define what's needed to be done from a business analyst perspective. Because, for example, if you are working with the uh, Agile environment, then we analyze the requirements, we refine the backlog, we try to provide as much descriptions as possible for those requirements, and then we just uh, try to see whether what's been developed is really reflecting what the client needs. So this is actually uh, related to both the requirements analysis and the development. But then what we actually also do is the system design. So we try to design the data flows for the systems, try to understand uh, what kind of data, uh, if there are many systems, what kind of data will be exchanged between the systems. We try to test the solution as well, because as an analyst, I need to know how the whole solution works, because in the Agile uh, environment, I am the one who is presenting the whole solution to the customer during demo sessions. So 
I need to know how to test it as well. And as a final activity is the acceptance, installation, and deployment. So actually accepting the development work with the customer and then and trying to proceed it to, to a further environment. So as a deliverables that we do, we have the BA communication plan, we have the requirement management plan. So requirement management plan defines actually what will happen with the requirements and how the requirements will be managed, on which stages we will produce the documents, descriptions, and so on. And then we have the user stories and the backlog for the agile environment and use case and specification uh, for the waterfall environment. So depending on the environment that we are working on, we'll try to uh, get a different approach to defining the uh, requirements. And uh, last but not least is a product roadmap because we will try always to draw a higher a bigger picture and try to put all of the requirements into context of a, of a bigger picture, so somewhat a product roadmap. And then the last stage of the project is the maintenance. So during the maintenance we are just uh, trying to solve the problems that the customer will have, so usually when we develop the whole system and we give it into the customer hands, they will have numerous questions. They, uh, for example, uh, will ask how to do some things, how to solve some of their problems that they've encountered, and so on and so on. And that's how what the business analyst is doing in this stage. So we are actually trying to help the customer, try to identify if the problems that they're reporting are the problems that are related to current functionalities or we need some improvements or enhancements, or perhaps uh, customers want to enhance the system and we need to provide some change requests as well. So it's all about the monitoring of how the customer is using the application that we've provided and, and what are the issues that they are encountering. And as deliverables, we uh, will develop change requests if it's needed. We will contribute to lessons learned and to be framework. So lessons learned is self-explanatory. So what we've encountered in the, during the project, what could be, uh, what could we've done better, what could, what was really good for a project, and to contribute to be a framework because framework as a whole is something that we are trying to use during all of our projects. And if we have a, some, some kind of best practices or we took a different approach in, in uh, some project and we see that it uh, resulted in getting uh, satisfaction from the customer, then we try to implement it to the existing framework. So the BE framework is a thing that is always evolving for us. So how we can help as a BAs. Uh, at the very beginning of a presentation, I've told you that almost 80% of project fails because of uh, different problems related to analysis. And these are actually the six main problems that uh, project encounters during the uh, development. So we have incomplete requirements, that's self-explanatory, lack of user involvement, If we do not uh, un identify the stakeholders, we won't get them to work. We have unrealistic expectations, lack of executive support, changing requirements, and lack of planning. As a business analyst, we can, uh, we can address all of those issues. So how to solve the problem with incomplete requirements, clarify and define the scope of a project. And as you saw during all of those phases that we have since the pre-sales, we are trying to understand what's needed to be done. Lack of users' involvement, easy. Identify the stakeholder and try to involve them, involve them uh, into the whole project. Try to uh, organize workshops, try to talk to them on demo sessions, and so on. Unrealistic expectations. Uh, that's the one that uh, is most commonly encountered uh, in IT projects, because customer wants different things from us. They want uh, all of the functionalities that are on the market in a small and neat package and also uh, a really performant package as well. So what we can do with expectations, we can do a feasibility study. So try to analyze if it's actually doable. Lack of executive support, we can engage the sponsors and try to get them to work for us as well. 
with changing requirements, we fight with the requirement management procedures because that's the issue that is also encountered in young uh, organizations, for example. Because customer will always want to have um, flexibility when it comes to the requirements. So they can say one thing at the very beginning of a project and then they can uh, completely change their mind. So what we can do is to address it with the requirement management procedure. If it's uh, clearly stated, then we can just try to fight with changing requirements. And then lack of planning. So with all of the activities that I've described to you, we are providing the quality to the project. And with quality, uh, we are solving all of the issues related to planning because we've done all of those parts with planning uh, since all of the, from all of the stages of, of the project. As a business analyst, uh, we are also struggling with different phases of requirements because requirements uh, can't always be described. We can have use cases, we can have class diagrams, we can have <coughs> some formalized processes, we can have mock-ups, and so on. So you just can't say that requirement is, is only something that is stated in the form of a description, because in some of the projects I've also saw that one of the uh, product owners actually described their user stories in the form of videos rather than uh, writing in, in Jira, for example, and that's, that's also working. So the main reason that we have so many faces of requirements is that we define the requirements as an answer to question what, how, where, who, when, and why. If we have some piece of evidence that, that can uh, answer all those questions, we can then treat it as a requirement. So it just requires from us a broader understanding of what can we use uh, to define such requirements. And when it comes to the tools that we use, uh, there is no defined set of tools. Each and every analyst has uh, his own favorite tools. For example, I like to use uh, Axure to define mockups. Some of the analysts likes, likes Balsamic. We can use Trello to manage our task. We can use Xminds to manage the requirements. And also the most commonly used thing is the Atlassian tool set. So we are using the combination of Confluence and Jira to define the requirements to and to manage the backlog. So as you can see, there are numerous possibilities of, of different tools that we can use, and there is no such thing as a defined framework of tools that we need to use for the project. And then when it comes to challenges that we have during development, uh, these are three main challenges that I've encountered during, during my work as an analyst. So the first one, it's impossible. So we are trying to gather the requirements from the customer and then we go to you as the developers and, and try to define what needs to be done and we get the answer, it's impossible. Uh, so how you can actually help us with this? Try to uh, describe why it's impossible, why do you think it's impossible? Perhaps uh, we had a uh, misunderstanding when it comes to, to, to uh, understanding what's needed to be done. And then we can try to address whether it's, it's a feasibility issue or whether it's actually, actually doable, bore, but for example, in a different way. Then there is a different understanding of the requirements. I've encountered actually several times uh, in different companies. Uh, so we are stating the requirements and then uh, we do other things and then uh, we see the developed functional and we, we decide, no, that's, that's not what we wanted. And, and so we try to figure out how it's even possible that we've defined uh, functionality in one way and we've uh, received something, something completely different. So what actually helps with different understanding is to try to ask us as many questions as possible. Uh, what I try to do is to uh, do free Amigos meetings. There are different 
names to, this, to these kind of meetings. But what I actually do is that I take the user story, I go through it with a tester and a developer, and then they try to ask as many questions as possible. So uh, we won't have any blind spots. They will have the same understanding as well. And then the third one is that the documentation is not understandable at all. If you can't understand something, then ask, 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 and try to uh, en encounter us, try to uh, just report to us that, that uh, there is something that needs to be changed in the documentation, ask for clarifications, and so on and so on. Mm, and then we all have a common knowledge, we'll have a common understanding of a whole project, and we will achieve a success. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, what is the difference between uh, you work and a uh, sales work? Because I hear that uh, almost 50 percent of time you uh, just working like a salesman, and you know. Mm. Well. Being a BA is also being a salesman. That's, uh, we are trying to be a salesman uh, during the first stages of a project. So uh, when there is a lot of wooing the customer and trying to uh, actually understand what the customer needs. Uh, what we have, uh, but we have a different skill set uh, when, when you compare us to the salesman because we have the understand, because we have a domain knowledge most of the times and we have a technical knowledge as well. So then we can uh, address and understand the customer that the problem, uh, the problem that the customer is facing uh, a bit more uh, rather than the salesman. Krzysztof, may I uh, just make a comment? Mm -hmm. uh, working in smaller companies, uh, I can describe the difference uh, sale uh, is uh, selling the idea of the project and uh, BA is uh, more mm, working on clarification of the idea. It's just my opinion since uh, smaller companies doesn't uh, don't have uh, such difference between BAs, PMs, sale ma managers, uh, smaller companies uh, could have one person for all three rows and only uh, such company as softserve uh, with bigger projects with uh, complex projects has such mm, uh, three different rows yeah so as as i told you uh, at the very beginning of the presentation uh, there is no such thing as only one role that you can name a business analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, so each and every person can be a, can be named a business analyst. It's 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 all the matter of the organization of a company. Yeah. Okay, guys, do you have uh, more questions? Okay. I don't know, Christoph. Uh, maybe you can suggest some solution or maybe practice which we can use for working with requirements uh, during the project life cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, it's really hard to, def to, to uh, just give you one advice because it's all dependent on the project. But what I found that is lacking in the most of the project is just trying to uh, define the dependency between the requirements because as you know requirements change over time and if for example a customer uh, wants us to change one of the requirements we actually need to know how many requirements we need to actually change so trying to keep the dependencies between the requirements is for me the key to a successful project between the requirements and the tasks or the yeah 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 actually uh, actually yes because first you have the uh, business requirements that the business is trying to, to uh, that you that you got from the business then uh, you can divide those requirements into functional requirements and NFRs and then you can uh, attach to those requirements the tasks so if 
then one of the business requirements is changing. You can see actually what is the impact for the whole project rather than just focusing on the requirement itself. It's really helpful when you uh, are having, for example, workshop with a customer and they can actually see what is the impact of the small minor changes that they are trying to propose. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Actually, guys, uh, the main uh, tool for you is asking more questions, but don't try to replace uh, be <laughs> on the project. <laughs> Just if you have a big project, involve uh, you rather involve uh, BA instead of being BA, right? Correct. <laughs> Any more questions, uh, guys? I, I have one maybe strange but a little bit painful question. In case a uh, customer uh, doesn't want to pay for BA from software side because they have people who kind of do this kind of work on their side, but in a very ineffective way, is there some... Um, Possibility, I don't know, maybe to train their guys to, to be for some best practices which we use on soft serve. Mm -hmm. Well, it can, it's really it's really hard to to uh, try to train external BAs from the from from customer side to work in the same standard uh, that we are. So. Uh, actually, what we are trying to do, if the customer wants wants uh, pay for a BA or do not want to pay for a BA, we are trying to involve the BA in the pre phase as much as possible to show the actual benefits of the BA from our side. Because, for example, right now I am working in, in the project that we have a business analyst office on the customer side as well. And then I'm just trying to translate those requirements from those business analysts to the, requ to the requirements that will be understandable by, by our team. If we would take it one by one to one, it won't work. So just try to uh, try to state all of the uh, advantages that the BA on software side gives, and try to define all of the risks that not having a BA on our side introduces. And that actually, uh, most of the most of the times, helps in convincing the customer that having a BA on soft side is is a really good idea. Okay, thank you, Krzysztof. Do we have such practice uh, as uh, involving uh, BA office or uh, BA specialist uh, while introduction meeting to the client, just for free? Uh, we don't have it? Well. Yeah, in, in some of the cases, that's, that's, that's actually what we're trying to do as well, because, uh, for example, we are, when we are trying to uh, do a project assurance, then we are trying to involve uh, business owners office to, to see whether we are following the right directions, what are the main uh, problems that we have, and how to solve them, and so on. So uh, BA office uh, works as a guidance, guidance cell in, in those cases. But it's it's actually possible from from uh, my understanding and from my experience. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, 